In this two-part series of videos, I will show you how to create a melee combat system in Unity. Hi, I'm Peter, and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In my starter project, for this tutorial, I can move and I can aim my weapon using the mouse cursor. You can learn how to set it up from my previous tutorial, the link will be in the description. To implement the combat system, we need three things. First, we'll want to play an attack animation when the player clicks an attack button, that is what we will create in this video. Next, we need to detect if we have actually hit something, and for this we are going to use physics2d.overlap circle all. In the game, it will simply be a circle that when we sw uh, swing our weapon, it will be casted and we will detect using this the colliders that we are touching to detect if we have hit something, uh, any enemies or any objects. Finally, we are going to create a health script that will store the value of the health of an object or an enemy that we want to hit and it will react to being hit by our player. This and the Raycast logic will be implemented in part 2. Ok, let's get going. So, in my project I have a player object that contains the sprite for the player itself and a weapon sprite which is inside the weapon parent. This weapon parent allows us to rotate the weapon around our uh, player to face always the cursor. To create our animation for the weapon to perform the attack, I need to select my weapon which contains the sprite render. And here to create the animation, I will minimize the transform and the sprite render and I will need to add animator. And this will allow us to create the animation. I will go to my assets and right click here create and I will need to create the animator controller at the bottom. And this will be our weapon animator. Okay. And because we will also need to have animations, I will right click here in the project section create. And I will create an animation. And I will call it weapon idle. And I will use control D to duplicate this. And I will rename this to be weapon attack. Okay. So now to add our animator and to be able to animate our weapon, I need to select the weapon again and I will need to assign my weapon animator to the animator component that I have just added. Okay. And now we should be able to start creating our animation. To do this, we need to go to the top menu of Unity, select window and we need to open animation and we need to select animator and animation. So let's start with the animator. It will appear in my screen in the top left corner of unity and i'll go back window animation and animation it will be in my uh, bottom left corner of unity so now it is empty i will drag here our weapon idle animation first uh, this will be uh, orange so default and i will drag the weapon attack next if you did uh, the opposite if your attack is default you can right click on the idle and set as default state okay so now we have two animations we need to assign here the sprites so that we have the idle animation for the weapon. To find my sprites, I will select the weapon, the sprite render and the sprite that I have selected. And here is my machete weapon. I will drag it to my idle animation in the animation window. And this is my idle animation. And that's basically it. Now I need to go back to my animator window. And here I will go to the parameters tab and I will use this plus icon to add a trigger. And this will be simply attack. Okay, so we are going to use this trigger to trigger the attack animation. To do this, to add a transition between those two, I need to right click on the idle, make transition and drag this arrow to the weapon attack. I will do the same the opposite way, so with attack, make transition and drag it to the idle. I will select the first arrow that goes to the attack animation and in the inspector, we should be able to find the has exit time and the settings for it. We want to set all the settings to all the values to be zero and uncheck has a, uh, exit time because we are going to use the condition at the bottom. Uh, we have the warning that we do not have uh, the condition for the transition. We are going to use this plus icon and the attack trigger should be assigned automatically. Now I'm going to go back to uh, the animator window and select the second transition. Now for this in the inspector, we need to again extend the settings and we need to set the exit time to be one and everything else to be zero. Basically, it will tell the animator that we want to play the animation for the attack once and then go back to the idle animation without any condition. 
And that's it for the setup for the animator. We need to go back to the animation window. We need to select our uh, animations and select the attack animation. Now, depending on your sprite, you will have a specific animation for your case. For me, I will select the zero uh, sprite. So this will be the first uh, keyframe. I'm going to select the second one. This will be somewhere in the middle so, so for the second frame. And I will select the last one, the fourth one, and I will place it on my fourth frame. And this will be my animation. We can go to the scene view to preview it. Now this only changes sprite. So I need to add the rotation for it. So to do this, I need to go to the properties, select pro add property, transform, and I will add the rotation. Now I will select my second frame. So uh, the one that I have changed the sprite for, I'll extend the rotation. And for the uh, rotation Z, I will set minus 90. Now, if your sprite is not rotating correctly, if it is rotating around the center, not around the handle of your weapon, you may need to go to your, uh, your sprite and open sprite editor, and you need to set the pivot to be somewhere around the handle of your weapon. Basically, this will allow us to rotate our weapon around the handle or around the specific point that you want to use. So for the second frame, I have rotated it by 90 degrees. And for the last frame, so for me, it is right now the fifth frame. I will select this and I will set the rotation to be minus 180. Now, the last keyframe in my case is the fifth one. So again, I want to set the Z to be minus 180. So let's play this animation. This is our animation. Now that we have our attack animation and the set up for transitioning between the idle and the attack animations. We can go back to our scene view and the game view. And now we should be able to select our weapon and enable the animator. And this should be uh, it. All we need to do now is on uh, the attack button press, we want to play this animation. And in my setup, I have already a script on the weapon parent called weapon parent script. I want to open this script and create a reference to my animator to be able to play the animation. So let me open the script. Great. Now at the top, I obviously need to have a public reference to the animator. I will call this animator. Okay. And I will assign it through the inspector. Now somewhere here, I need to create a public void. And this will be attack method. All I need to do here is call my animator dot set trigger and I will pass the trigger. I have called it attack with capital A and we are going to trigger this to play our animation. Now, obviously, this will mean that every time we press our attack button, we are going to perform an attack and we may not want that. So let's go up and let's add a public float. And let's call it the delay. Let's set it to be something like 0.3. F. So this will be the delay that we want to keep and we are going to create private ball and let's call it attack blocked. So this we will use to block continuous attack. We can only attack after the delay is passed. So we are going to check if uh, the attack is blocked. We are going to return. And if not, we are going to set animator trigger. We're going to set the attack blocked equals true and we can start a coroutine and I'm going to create a delay attack coroutine. Okay, I'm going to alt enter here to generate this method. We I will need to change the return type to be I enumerator and this will be our coroutine. All I will do here is yield return new wait for a second and I want to use the delay that we have added at the top. And after the delay is finished, we are going to reset the attack blocked to be false. So this way we can add a delay to the attack so we cannot really const continuously attack. We can only swing once and then we need to wait a bit before we can attack again. Okay, so now we need to call these attack methods to actually perform our attack. So let's save our script. Let's go back to Unity. Okay. Now for my setup, I'm using the new input system and I'm using the left mouse button to perform an attack. I have a specific tutorial about how to set up the new input system. The link will be in the description, but I'm getting the result of the input in my player script. So let me open it up. 
So in my player script, I have those input action references and one of those is the attack. So the mouse click and for the mouse click performed. So when we click our mouse, I'm assigning the perform attack method. So this method is called when we perform an attack. And as you might recall, our weapon parent, so our script has the attack method that we want to call. And I already have a reference to this weapon parent in my player. So all I need to do is in the perform attack method that I call when I click my button for the attack, I'm going to call weapon parent dot attack. And that's basically it. So now I should be able to press mouse button and perform an attack. So perform our animation. So let's save our script and let's go back to Unity. Okay. Now I need to assign my uh, weapon animator to my weapon parent. So I'm going to drag my weapon animator as the reference and now we should be good to go. Okay, so now we should be able to perform an attack by clicking our fire button or attack button. In my case, it is a mouse uh, button. But right now, in my case, the animation is following constantly my mouse, which is not desirable because we may want to just perform an, an attack in the specific direction, blocking the possibility of the weapon following our mouse uh, until the animation is done. So let's quickly fix this by blocking uh, the movement until the animation is done finished so let me go back to unity now so far if you are enjoying this tutorial if it is helpful please leave a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment it would help me a lot thanks now to block the movement of the weapon when we are performing an animation i may go to the weapon parent script since this controls my behavior of the weapon and i'm going to type prop click tab twice to create a property and I'm going to change the type to evolve. I'm going to click tab again twice to move to the name and I'm going to uh, call this is attacking. And I'm going to press enter to finish this. This is a property so I, we can access it publicly and set it publicly. I want to set it only privately so I'm going to add private in front of the set and this will be it for the property. Now inside our uh, class we need to create another method i'm going to call it public void reset attack or is attacking we are going to call this from our animation event and i'm going to call here is attacking equals false and i'm going to set it to be true when we are performing the attack so i'm going to set is attacking in the attack method to be true okay and basically this is it so now let's save this and let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. I'm going to select the weapon, go to the animation, select the weapon attack animation. And basically I want to drag my keyframe uh, to be the last frame. I'm going to add an event using this add event icon. And if I select this event in the inspector, I should be able to assign any public method. But currently we can't really access our method from the weapon parent script. So I will go to my scripts, create a new script. This will be the animator helper or an animation helper or animation event helper. And let me open it up. Great. All I will do here is create a public Unity event. I'm going to Alt Tab to import using Unity Events. Uh, Unity Engine. Event, and this will be on animation triggered or on animation event. Triggered. I will add here a public void trigger event. And this will be a helper method that will simply trigger our own on animation event trigger unit event. Add question mark dot invoke. So in case nothing is listening to this event, it will be ignored. Okay, let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. Great. Now let's select our weapon. Let's drag here our animation event helper. And now if we select this and go to our animation weapon attack we can assign to this uh, event select function trigger event and now we can select our weapon on animation event triggered now has this field that we can fill in we can assign here a method we are going to click this plus icon select our weapon parent no function weapon parent and we have this reset is attacking and this is it last thing that we need to do is check it in my player script which con controls the movement of the weapon I'm going to select the player uh, script, open it up. Okay. 
So here in the update, I am setting weapon parent dot pointer position equals pointer position. So actually we can go back to our weapon parent. So let me select weapon parent, right click, go to the definition. And we are setting this uh, pointer position here. And in the update of the weapon, we are setting the direction where the weapon should be pointing to. So instead we are going to check if uh, is attacking is true we are going to simply return from this logic we not want the weapon to react to the change of the position when we are playing the animation okay i have slowed the animation just to show you that now our weapon is performing the attack animation before it starts back uh, following our pointer this way we can keep on moving our character but the attack is performed in the specific direction great so we have our animation in the next video, next part of this tutorial, we are going to raycast uh, or circle cast to detect if there are colliders in the range of our weapon. And then we are going to perform a hit using the health script that we are going to also create in the next video. See you there.